Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. This episode we're talking about Game of Thrones. If you didn't like the finale or really any of the last season, this is the podcast for you because we are very hard on it. And if you did like the final season, well, maybe just hate listen to the podcast. There's nothing better than hate listening to a podcast. And you can find that out right here if you like the season. One thing of note is that we didn't really coordinate streaming and recording the podcast very well. So... While Maggie and Ben were streaming Overwatch uh, on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash everything, we were recording this using OBS on my end, and because of that, we have some stream sound effects for like the first 20, maybe 30 minutes. They're not very frequent, but if you hear some random noises that seem out of place in the background, that's what they are. They do eventually go away. I don't think it will be too big of a deal for enjoying the podcast, so with that, enjoy the show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Brian and Dylan Take on the World. I'm, of course, Brian. Oh, no, I'm Dylan. I'm Dylan. Uh, with me is... Uh, Nailed it. Is hair to the Iron Throne, king of the podcasting world, Brian. What's up, What's up, pal? Hey, uh, I, I am actually Brian, uh, for real. I'm doing quite well, Dylan. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, I was doing good until I started thinking about Game of Thrones again. But like right when you're like hi everybody and then you're like oh shit we're doing a game of thrones podcast and then it just went all downhill after that hey uh i am here with my my good friend tamor though tamor what's up bud hello hello everyone yeah you might know tamor from a lot of shows like the itchio show and from making all of our videos watchable yeah so in the time that we graded a quiet place and i gave it a 95 <laughs> Friends yeah. and never talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but we, we smoothed things out in the off season. We uh we got him back and yeah, we're here we're here to talk about the last season of Game of Thrones and I guess the show as a whole, right? Yeah, sure are. Uh it's it's gonna be an interesting talk. I'm really curious. Uh your guys' takes. Uh... Yeah, I mean I, I don't see why it would be particularly interesting. I think everyone basically just agrees great season uh universally loved there's certainly no mm. no arguing online just uh everyone loves it right guys yeah perfect right. ending really it was great it was great it was great all right um where do we want to start off do we want to start off of about how we thought about the series is leading up to this season or do we want to get into it and start from the first episode of this season I want to say, I mean, let's let's just jump on the finale since that's, what's, that's <laughs> just fresh yeah. in, in everyone's minds. Okay. Um, so Brian, why don't you go first? Ooh. I feel like I'm always I'm always going first. I mean, you know, we can't <laughs> put the guests in the spot. Why don't you go ahead? So I said to myself after I watched it that I'm not going to make a quick decision. I'm going to take a few days to think about it, and I've thought about it, and I don't like it very much at all. Um. I thought where it ended up isn't, it's not great, but it isn't the worst place the show could have ended up. However, the choice to speed up the final two seasons of the show was terrible. They, they didn't give themselves enough time to really portray Daenerys' descent into madness well at all. I feel terrible for Amelia Clark, who poured her like heart and soul into the character for years and years and years and did such an amazing job having to kind of throw it all away in the span of three really two episodes it just didn't sit well with me at all what are your thoughts Dylan uh yeah so uh, I, I'm, I'm with a lot of people where I, I, I fucking hated it <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that the amount of character assassinating that went on mm-hmm. astonishing I, I, I don't have as much as a problem with the ending, and the reason by that is I can I can totally see the book series somehow ending in a very similar way. Right. But the difference is, is that it's going to be well developed and obviously spread out over two books that are like eight hundred pages each. George R. R. Martin's like, yeah, who's an idiot for taking his time now, huh, guys? <laughs> and. and to, to your point, what's even more frustrating is that is that the writers Benioff and Weiss they they were given in the show they're, they're showrunners too mm. they were given the, the option to 
basically extended, I don't know if it was unlimited seasons, but they were given the option to basically, here's the budget, just make as many seasons as you want. They're like, no, we'll do the two short seasons. Mm-hmm. Like, we're good. We have Star Wars coming up in a couple yeah. of years. We really want to get yeah, onto yeah. that. Right. Uh, so, so they're ch- I, and I, I hear a lot of people that, that blame George R. R. Martin for not coming out with the books. And I, I used to be in that party, and then really just this last season, because I didn't have as much problem with season seven mm-hmm. when it did this season. Uh, it, they, they ended up doing it to themselves, the yes. writers. And they, I really don't think they have anyone to blame other than themselves. Yeah. It's just, it do, it almost seems like it, it's surreal to me. Like it, did, it does not seem like that was Game of Thrones, right? Like it, yeah. it seems like that that was like a high budget fan fiction that somebody made. And uh, yeah, I'm like not a good one. <laughs> not not like it was like it was the way the season went out was basically as like if someone was describing to me in like bullet points how the season went out was basically how it was shot. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, like, like yeah. yeah. Well, Rasani got killed and then like, yeah, like Danny just got real upset and then yeah. just like, burnt down the city like out of nowhere. And then, mm-hmm. and then uh, John just stabbed her after that and, and the, 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 the dragon carried her off and, and then Bram was king. Like, that's really, that's like, that's like how it was written. Right. All right. Tamar, what I'm, do you, what do you I'm think? hurt. <laughs> Dylan's hurt. What about you, Tamar? Yeah. No, I, okay, so put it this way <clears throat> i gave up on the show last season because i did not like the pacing and it was so different from the rest of the show mm-hmm. so well okay so I'll, I'll, we'll start with just the finale the finale i think every most people can agree it was awful besides like maybe you know like moms who like don't really get it in the first place and just you know want to see like a hollywood wood movie or whatever okay. um i agree shot at I, moms I, but I, uh <laughs> we'll allow it for now some moms, not all moms. Right. I have a mom. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, I completely agree that it's like it was actually like like disrespectful for like these actors and a lot of these people working on the show. Where it really just like was like uh, it was a bad it was a bad ending. It was a bad choice for them to rush it all. Mm. Um, having said that, uh, I yeah. So like I said, I gave up on the show last season because I didn't like how it was going, and even into this season, there was moments where I was just like, "All right, well, I you know, I guess I'll just appreciate it for what it is now." Right. But with this finale, it, I couldn't even appreciate it for that. I just felt so like dead inside, basically the entire time, except for maybe the shot of like Sansa getting the crown. That I, <laughs> I did feel emotional during yeah. that part, but other than that, like literally the whole thing was just like. Like, why are there Dorth- Dothraki? They were supposed to be dead. There's, like, all these things that just didn't even make any sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm renting more than I uh, even thought I would. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, this is a safe space, man. You can uh, rent yeah, as much yeah. as you want. <laughs> I, 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 I do agree with Tamar. That it, it is really a shame how, how poorly the, the writing fell apart because these past two seasons, which it had a lot to do with, with their budget, obviously, but even this season, I, I think, it was probably one of the more beautiful things I've seen on both TV and film in terms of cinematography, special effects, mm-hmm. even like the practical effects. I, when you watch the documentaries that they put up on Facebook like the day after that shows all, all the amount of just people that were all behind behind the camera that like you'll never you'll never know their name that just all, all the shit that they did. I'm not trying to make them sound like they're Navy SEALs, but <laughs> just all the, all, all the work that went into this and like I think they filmed in like three different countries or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it, it really does suck. It's like, especially, uh, is it Ramin Jawadi, who is the, the, who has the score? Oh, sorry, yeah. The, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or for the entire series is, is beautiful. Yeah. I, like, I find myself just listening to it in the car, and I, I really mm-hmm. think that he, he especially was one of the guys who does not get as much credit as he deserves, who really stay consistent. And, and in my opinion, his he just got better and better as the show went on. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it... It sucks. It really does suck for those people, and you know, you do have a lot of people like the people that are signing the petition mm. to have it remade. Which, like, you're an asshole. It's yeah, yeah, happen. yeah. It's yeah, yeah, but it, that, yeah. It, it sucks for the people that are behind the camera because I mm. really do think that, other than the writing, mm-hmm. just everything was almost near perfect. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. It looked, it looked even, great. Yeah, yeah, and even the even the performances, you know, you these actors were doing the best with like what they had you know even like Tyrion's oh, last yeah. like you know speech it's like it's like it was a good performance even though the, 
dialogue wasn't that strong and like logically it didn't it came out of nowhere you know uh, yeah yeah i as, as an occasional very rarely but occasional actor it's just like how did they do so well with what they had <laughs> yeah. like they really all just acted their asses off and they're all there's such an amazing cast which kind of carried some of the dumb stuff but god some of it was mm-hmm. so is that for your own screw your own no, no, he's he's fine. he's a fine actor. He just he uh, was clearly he didn't understand what Game of Thrones was. Super great character in the books, and, mm-hmm. and a very an even stranger guy in the books that was just completely same yeah. thing like character assassination in in the show. There was just mm-hmm. and that was kind of the, there was so many different things that that now in hindsight you're like, what was the point of that? What was the point yeah. of uh, of A, B, C, and D? And it really it. it that's probably the more infuriating part is that in the books, you, you know that it'll be answered. That what was the point of of Bran warging if that happens in the book? Like, what was the point mm. of Jon Snow being a Targaryen? Because the exactly. only point of, of Jon Snow being a Targaryen in the show was to turn Danny crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I really, I really have a hard time believing that that's how that's going to be the reason why he's a Targaryen. Yeah. I mean, you have to think about it as far as, like, the bigger picture and the themes that, like, they wanted to portray as far as, like, this is the ideal ending because of, you know, so-and-so, where, yeah, it's exactly what you just mentioned, where it's like, okay, so the whole reason for all of this was literally to prevent, like, another Targaryen from becoming, you know, the ruler of the Seven Kingdoms, and it's like, but but why? We loved this character. We, like, she put, she would have been fine until, like, basically the last, like, probably two hours of, of the television series. Yeah. I, I, I'm super okay with, with Danny becoming the, the, the Mad Queen. Because like I said, I, I can I can really see that end up happening in the books, but in the books it's going to be a thousand times more fleshed out and mm-hmm. make a lot more sense. And I'm sure yeah. things will change that why she went crazy. And I guarantee the main point is going to be because John said he didn't, he didn't love her anymore. He didn't want to do Kissy Kitty. Mm. <laughs> right, exactly. Um. Yeah. So I mean, Brian, what was uh, what was I guess one of your highlights from this season, if, if you if you can find one. Um, I think the acting obviously stands up, uh, stands out as head and shoulders above most, you know, shows, movies, anything, and then just the spectacle of it all. You know, like we had a fucking. Even though I didn't like it, we had a dragon burning down a city, like, on a t- TV show. And it looked mm-hmm. awesome. And all the, the, the episodes were extremely well made and put together. It's just the writing undercut, like, all of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I mean, even, even the, uh, the big battle at uh, uh, Winterfell with, mm. with, the, with the dead it was like I, I actually quite like that episode I know a lot of people hated it like Ben in mm. our chat was like what the fuck is this yeah. I thought that episode was like really cool even though you know it just it was like why is this why is this ending right now where this could have been like a literally a full season so yeah. one of the things like when, when the, the first episode of this season came out and you're watching like the new intro and I was like super hyped and I was like this is mm. fucking awesome they show King's Landing and like they're building these walls and I was like, oh my god, is this like going to be like, you know, the dead get to King's Landing and like every like, you know, every city is like gearing up for this huge like apocalypse type situation. I was like, this could be a full season. It could be like really dope. And I had him like imagining all these things and it's like, oh yeah, so they like they conquer them in like literally one episode. <laughs> Let's move on. And, little things like that even though you know I, I did have fun watching that episode i thought visually it was like stunning i was well, able to see it <laughs> unlike i guess a lot of people with their tvs <laughs> i'm glad we can get positive for a second but then now that now that we, we bring we bring up the night king and winterfell yeah uh the intro because i was kind of under the same assumption like when they show the ice blocks flipping over in the intro i, I, I didn't think it was just going to be for two episodes. I, I, I thought that it was kind of almost foreshadowing, like, hey, in my head, I was like, may they lose at Winterfell, and this thing goes all the way down to King's Landing, and each episode, the night scene gets further and further. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it was it was just, it was three episodes, and, and re- I mean, really, you only dealt with the Night King for, for one. And mm-hmm. kind of what we said earlier with them shorting the seasons, uh, this really could have been, this whole, 
all these story arcs probably could have been put together in full ten episode three seasons, and it, I I think it just would have been far and away so much better than what we got, and it's just that's that's the most infuriating part because it just could have been so good. It could have just been unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, I, one now season I, for like the Night King, wherever you place that. One season for Cersei, and one for Daenerys. That's like, I guess, the final season is like, oh, this person who we've like been rooting for the entire time is like becoming like a Tyrion or whatever, and you know that could have been like a, basically a full season. Maybe you, maybe you like, you know, there's some crossover with Cersei and all these things, but yeah, it kind of goes into like one, one of the one of the longer story arcs for me. Was was Arya in in the Hound, where they started mm-hmm. in I th- think the beginning of season three, mm. when when they when they first meet up and they're traveling through the Riverlands to try to get to the twins, and then after that them trying to j- just just kind of gallivanting around uh, the middle of Westeros. Like the big thing with these two seasons was obviously the complaints of the jetpacking, uh, and I totally get it. And they like they put themselves in the, they backed themselves into the corner to have to jetpack around. It was probably the least of my complaint, but mm-hmm. part of the great, the, the one of the great things that made Game of Thrones so awesome was the, the character building that went on during that episode. Them just totally. just walking on a path in, in the Riverlands, like it just the, the the character building that went on, which is to me the the biggest thing and the biggest failure of these of these two seasons. Just there was it was decided to change one thing and it just happened on the screen. Mm-hmm. There's not nothing. In my opinion, prevented Danny to go that crazy. Like, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. I'm, I'm still now just flabbergasted talking. <laughs> well, I think that's why episode two was so good because it was mm-hmm. like you know pre pre like you know we're all gonna maybe die. Let's just like enjoy the moment, the night, you know. And you have all these like little character things, and that was probably the best episode of the season, I think. Yeah, I I agree. I think that was classic game of thrones and i don't know if i said it in the group chat but i definitely remember saying it like that's probably the last episode of game of thrones proper we're gonna get which i th- i didn't think like oh it's gonna be bad as i felt like it kind of turned out to be it was more like oh this is the game of thrones we're used to with the character development scenes you know it's not all battles that type of a thing and i thought that was going to be the end i thought the rest was going to just be breakneck speed which it was but I guess in retrospect, it's like, yeah, that was the last, like, good episode of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Cause I, I yeah. mean, the the Battle of Winterfell was cool, also. You could see it, it was. That, that, that's, <laughs> that, that was probably, so that was really the only, the only technical flaw I have in this whole season was the, the Battle, Battle of Winterfell. I don't, I can respect them for, for reasons that they wanted to keep it dark and make it seem realistic, mm. but... I was sitting in a pitch black room that had blackout curtains in it with, yeah. with my TV on some sort of setting that I had to Google after the episode to see if I could get to see a little bit more. And I still couldn't oh, no. see it. Uh, so that was, that, that was, and I think everyone kind of shared that complaint that it was so dark. And then the, the, there was people that took gifs of, of the gifs or whatever you call them right. and, and put them on Reddit after of, of certain scenes uh, slowed down and highlighted. Mm-hmm. And one of which was like John flying on the back of, of Rhaegal and the uh, Viserion biting at them and actually like ripping John's like cloak off, mm-hmm. and then the actual scene of of Rhaegal biting into Viserion's neck. I I did I did mm. not catch that at all when I first right. watched it, and it's kind of like you you spent this budget and like how much did this the thirty seconds of this dragon battle cost to make right for CGI and, for and us to so not see it? To fucking see it. Yeah, Ooh, that's bad. That is a really bad look. It, they kind of just like I, I think I think the cinematography came out after was like like you're either like stupid or you're or, or you're I think he just called us stupid. He was like you're stupid or you're poor if you didn't see it. Oh, no. Yeah, he's like, hey, how about you all um, get good TVs? I don't know. <laughs> get a <laughs> color correction monitors. Like, yeah, specifically for like yeah. yeah the stuff they use on set. Why don't you all watch Game of Thrones on that? Yeah, like that's a, I I was able to see it, but I I have like a pretty recent I think my monitor's from like twenty I think it's from last year actually, so 
I, yeah, I can't really sympathize. Well, I can sympathize. I yeah. just can't relate. <laughs> I no, Jenny and I were watching it on a pretty old TV, and there were some parts where I was like, I don't know. I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> yeah. So, what can you what can you do? I guess I'm just too poor to enjoy Game of Thrones that I mean, episode I, particularly. I will say I think this is actually a, a, has been a bad trend in cinema in general. Like I know there mm. was complaints about that during like Solo, and I remember seeing it in theaters and being like, okay, I can't even see what's happening. Mm. It's like The I, Walking it's, Dead I, gets it a lot. Yeah, where they just don't like shit. I think it's because cameras have gotten so good that you can like basically expose for like darkness mm. but that doesn't really mean you should i don't know to me like hateful eight is like the best example of like okay yes it takes place during night in like a fucking blizzard but like mm. it's lit and you can see everything <laughs> <laughs> and uh the battle of helms deep too that took oh, place yeah, at night totally. at night and you can see everything yeah so that was like the prime example i used and i, I can't take credit i heard it on the podcast somewhere. Mm. yeah battle of helms deep came out what I don't even know yeah, three, four, somewhere in that area. And it looked great. Mm, and like yeah. even I watched it, I watched it on DVD on my on my PlayStation on my on the same exact TV, and it looks fantastic. Mm. And I, I, it's just I, I it's 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 kind of a small nitpick in in, in hindsight because there's just so much shit <laughs> that we didn't know was coming, and I kind of like completely yeah, forgot yeah. about the Battle of Winterfell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think the biggest disappointment of the Battle of Winterfell was it was set up to be this one, like, the most epic battle in the history of the show, which it was, but it was also, like, with those implications, the stakes should have been raised, and we should have probably lost some more people, mm-hmm. and we didn't lose hardly anyone. We lost Ed and Beric and Melisandre and... Anyone? Anyone else? Uh, I'm forgetting his name, but Danny's the guy. Oh, who Sir Jorah. Jorah. Sir Jorah. Yeah, yeah. He's probably the biggest one, I think. Yeah. So those four, uh, and then. Did... Sorry, you go. How did you guys feel about Arya killing the Night King? In the, in the way all that was. Uh, I mean, it 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 was a bad story choice, in my opinion. Um, I get it. I get what they were trying to do. But I also, it really undercuts, like, the whole point of the Lord of Light. What, what does the Lord of Light give a shit about Daenerys Targaryen being the queen of Westeros? Yeah. He, he wouldn't care. He's a mysterious god. Like, all he cares about is stopping, like, this plague of death. So the idea that he resurrects Jon to kill Daenerys doesn't really sit well with me, particularly. I don't know about you guys. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, in the moment, I thought it was really cool mm-hmm. that she dropped her knife and stabbed him. And I was oh, like, yeah, oh, it was me. Really awesome. Yeah. But in my head, even, yeah, I mean, after you know, seeing the the end of it and everything, it it makes way more sense to have John be the one to kill him because that's been his, his arc the entire fucking, like, mm-hmm. series since he's known about this. And I, 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 I mean, I, I remember watching the, um, the behind the scenes with with uh, <laughs> with the creators and they were like yeah it seemed too obvious for us to like have it be john i was like that's because that's what you've been fucking setting up for seasons so you don't it's, have to just yeah like, uh, that should be a lesson yeah. to writers out there it's okay if you build up to something and have it happen yeah. like you don't need to just <laughs> surprise people for the sake of surprising people if you spend a long time building up to something and people see it coming but it's done well They'll be okay with it. Mm-hmm. What do you oh, think? I, I, I'm actually on, on the on the other side of, of this argument. I, I actually do, I liked it a lot, and I, I totally agree with the whole thing that them saying after the show that John being John being the one that slayed the Night King was just too obvious was bullshit. Like you're basically saying that that yeah exactly your writing has built up to this and it makes sense. Like the whole audience should know that John says we want to kill the Night King. And mm-hmm. just because you wanna you wanna pull a little trickery and have it be someone else just for the sake of doing that, like fuck mm-hmm. you. Like, that, uh, like the, the whole point of building a story is for that. Mm-hmm. But uh, in my opinion, the, the only other person I'm really glad it was was, was Arya. Uh, oh yeah, if it wasn't John Arya, like that's good, you know. In hindsight, 
this is pretty much where her story ends. Because what the fuck does she do for the rest of the show? Nothing, because the rest of her story should have been bringing either down Cersei or Daenerys, and they're like, oh, well, we can't have her also do that, so. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, this, this is, this is going to lead back into talking about the finale, which I kind of want to do, but, so she kills the Night King. It, mm-hmm. it, it, I don't think that they paid attention to the prophecies in, in the show, mm-hmm. but she's either Azor High or the prince, princess of Bronis, whatever, great. Well, yeah, um, it doesn't make any sense. She didn't stab anyone that she loved in the heart to make a flaming sword. So the prophecy is just does, was forgotten. The new thing that they have for her, she apparently moves like fucking Wally West. Like, like <laughs> out of nowhere, she's just like, she's yeah. here and now she's dead. Mm-hmm. She, she moves so fast that a, a gust of wind blew in, in the useless White Walker's hair, may I add. Oh my <laughs> god, the White Walkers are so fucking useless. What was the point of that? And what was the point <laughs> of showing all 12 of them? Like, I, yeah. So you can have that cool shot of them rolling into the Godswoods. We're getting we're getting back to, to the finale, but I gotta now now I'm back down the Winterfell. Well, I'm brought down with, with the with the rest of you two. Um, all those White Walkers they showed them. I think at the very end of the second episode, there was like thirteen of them. Like there was there were yeah. so many. Uh, thematically, it would have made so much more sense for say Jorah, who had a Valerian steel sword, mm-hmm. to to save Danny from one or two White Walkers. Yeah, why, I would have. Why, why didn't you do that? I would have loved that, to see a couple of them die at least, like I don't you know. know. They all they all get dropped like a bunch of bitches when they're when they're when their daddy gets stabbed. Which, <laughs> uh, I fucking I hated that. I I, yeah. I hate I hate I, so I lo- I didn't mind Arya killing, but I think the way that the, like other than the hordes that they had, which like when they were piling up on the, on the walls of Winterfell looked great. Mm-hmm. Other than that, like the Night King kind of sucked. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. Was not ready for combat. Uh, he just smiled he and walked he, in. Yeah, he just walked in. And he was too. He was too scared to fight John, so he had to raise up. All oh the yeah, that was such a bitch he did move. Not fight John. <laughs> so I'm now kind of like on the team. Like fuck the Night King. The Night King's kind of a bitch. Mm-hmm. The Night King's only only a a TV show character. So there's mm-hmm. like there's no Night King in the book yet. So like fuck the Night King. Uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that he that he's dead. Uh, and, and, Why not and, have and John? Right now, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're saying. I wish he won. I wish. The Night King <laughs> Within seconds, I'm now back on Team Night King. Mm-hmm. I hope he comes back. Next Night King time. versus Cersei instead. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else dies. Yeah. It's, it's the end. It's the ending in, in hindsight that we deserved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like if you're gonna have those other White Walkers, like maybe have a couple of them be the bodyguards of the Night King, so that preoccupies John. You saw. Mm-hmm. Sorry. It's, sorry, I, I keep cutting you off, dude. Sorry. Um, you saw at, at, at Hard Home like how how good of fighters they are. Mm-hmm. Well, they, like they they do their they took down a couple fens like they and like the wildlings are, are no joke when it comes to fighting. Mm. So like they know their way around their little ice sword. So the fact mm-hmm. that they just allowed Arya like their one job apparently was just to make sure no one got to the Night King and they failed at that. Like yeah. fuck like those Craster's kids are a bunch of dumb idiots. <laughs> And, like, a lot of, um, they would have been extremely effective because the only, like, people who can fight them are the people with Valyrian steel swords. Because we've seen, like, when they fight normal people, they just smash their weapons. They freeze them. You know, like, yeah. super freeze them. And the only ones that can withstand it was, like, John's sword at hard, at hard home. So, yeah, have, like, Ser Jorah, have John, have some of the people with the Valyrian, uh, Brienne, That's Jamie. Right. You know, have them be fighting the smaller bosses, not just have them walk around and do nothing. What was the point of what was the point of Sam giving Jorah? Uh, I think it's called Heart's Bane, his, mm-hmm. his family sword that's a Larry Steel. Like, what was the point of that? Because uh, uh, yeah. he could have he could have did the same damage using just Dragonglass. Like, what was the story point of Sam giving him that sword? Yeah, the only thing is like the in the only and I don't even know if the show intended this. This is just what I kind of thing was like, you know, jo- a big part of Jorah's story is he like brought such dishonor upon his family that he gave Longclaw back to his father before he fled to Essos. Mm-hmm. Um, and then him getting a Valyrian sword back is like his redemption being complete. But I don't even know if the show is intending that or if I'm just like adding that because that's what I want it to be. I mean, I guess, I guess that's what it has to be at this point. Um, mm-hmm. I, I didn't get that, but I mean, it makes sense. But it's kind of, it's the same thing with with, uh, with Brienne. 
like in hindsight, and I keep saying in hindsight because it, it, it's even worse now. Yeah. Now when I'm really thinking about it, like Brienne having a Valyrian steel sword too. No, like, and she, she first off, her pod, Jamie and, and Sam. I think Sam was just like sleeping under a pile of, of zombies. Yeah. He's he's all good. Yeah, there's a moment uh, where John looks at him and they make eye contact, and John keeps walking. When I was like, "All right, Sam's dead," and then he's just <laughs> fine. Yeah. Just, they made such a big deal of Larry Steel, and in the end, of Larry Steel dagger killed the Night King. Mm. Great, but I, it would have been so much better. And maybe they're just gonna say some bullshit where, oh, you know, if you want to see the dragon burn down King's Landing in two episodes, then we couldn't really have the, the White Walkers fighting him for once because mm. uh, money. And like, okay, great, like fucking super <laughs> yeah it's like it's especially frustrating and especially thematically with the dagger that should have ended like the war for the throne since it started the war of the five kings not ending the war for like humanity like mm-hmm. that's i don't know i don't know man <laughs> yeah no i mean rewriting it and giving it time it's like you could, it's just so many there's so many options even in that one battle it's like if any you know if like gray worm died mm-hmm. you know then like king's landing might have like turned out different it's like all these different things where they just they kept too many characters you know it's like mm-hmm. they didn't they weren't it wasn't the classic game of thrones where they were like fearless and killing their darlings it was like yeah. literally jamie and brienne and like podrick like live even though they're being fucking trampled on especially sam who's not even a fucking fighter What's yeah. his name? The old man who's like not a fighter either. Somehow lives. Oh, Davos. Yeah. Davos. He's like yeah, way he's underplaying like... himself. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's. Maybe like that's I'm not even a fighter. Bad. It's like you've literally survived every single battle you've ever been in against oh, yeah. like. <laughs> most Davos. Of the Davos odds. has been in the Battle of Blackwater. Mm-hmm. He has been in for like a minute. <laughs> he's been in the Battle of Winterfell. Mm-hmm. Survived the, the fucking genocide of King's Landing. Yeah. Like, Davos is Battle like the, the most experienced. Yeah, Battle of the Bastards. He's he's like the he's like the most experienced fighter that there is. <laughs> yeah. He, he, yeah. He, he's like he's gonna be writing like textbooks about how, how to be in battles but not do anything. Yeah. yeah. How to not die in a battle. Just stay. I don't know. Just have plot armor. It's not hard, think, guys. Come on. So I think the biggest thing which we have to discuss is how it ended and who became the final yeah. we're all like avoiding that well can we complain about braun <laughs> for a minute first about brand braun oh braun why is oh. braun even in this season oh i know <laughs> i have no fucking clue i, oh, I, I, I assume I, they uh, thought people like wanted him but like no one i don't think anyone did really care any of the fans i wouldn't i like i like braun so it was, i wouldn't have minded having him in the season, but I wish he would have done something. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Let, let's 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 get to the ending. But I first okay. want to go over two other two other things that happened in the finale before. Okay, yeah, yeah. Before yeah. the big uh, happy reunion at the end. Uh, mm. One of which, the first thing that really bothered me in this episode, right off the bat, uh, was when Tyrion goes down under the keep uh-huh. and those stubbly legs <laughs> find a hole in the all. The, but I assume, but I thought the whole thing caved in, but apparently not. Yeah, I thought the uh, fucking castle collapsed. He the gets last down episode. underneath there to where Jamie and, and Cersei were, and he's. I noticed it right away when he was walking on the ground. Like that, there's not a single fucking brick on these ground. Like, either either Doc Raggy got down there and cleaned up quickly, <laughs> yeah. or or this is gonna look dumb. And boy, did it ever! Mm-hmm. So he gets over. He gets over their bodies, and there's like there's like. Like, a, like 20 bricks maybe if they were in a hard hat or like a helmet or, or some like if they would have maybe jamie would have just put his hand up above his head mm-hmm. i think they arguably would have survived oh yeah that the, that golden hand would have protected them easy the the poor masonry that there was probably it was constructed thousands of years ago it's the only, it looks like that was like only a couple bricks fell down like oh uh, like fuck that it's just so dumb it's just, <laughs> it's just it, it, it and it just it's like the very beginning and i like it sucks because uh peter dinklage's performance in that scene so good oh yes. yeah so good it re- really hits you because it, it, it kind of just shows too that I, and i even think he was maybe even sh- shedding a little tear for his sister too because i really do think mm-hmm. that honestly he maybe wanted his sister to live yeah and I think so. it, oh yeah 
it, it really it really hit you. I'm like, fuck Peter. And then I look behind him, I'm like, fuck Peter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, beyond it being like bad like set design and just like lo- bad logic on like everyone's part. Like mm-hmm. how did no one like on set be like, wait well, guys, like maybe we should add more more rocks. <laughs> yeah, I know like I was like being active like, all right, so they died. Yeah, they get crushed by rocks and then like look around and just be like, how? Like there's so many open spaces. What they mm-hmm. ah, the dumbest Lannisters, you know? I- I thought they were. I thought they were gonna stop where he got to the bottom of the stairs and it was all blocked off. Yes. And I thought that's when he was gonna realize, like, oh, like they're dead because yeah. they they, mm-hmm. they were in there, they're done. Right. And then he's like, nope, there's a hole here with some sunlight coming in there somehow. <laughs> oh, let me let me yeah, let me I, get I mean, through there since so I'm the only one that's big enough. And oh, there's there oh they're dead and, by those couple bricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But even beyond that, it, that was actually the Jamie's de- Jamie and Cersei's death was like the biggest one that I had. The, I had the biggest issue with that one just because I I, I really like Jamie's character and I I even mm-hmm. like that he left Brienne to go find Cersei and it really shows you know the complexity of his character that he sees himself as like a bad man even though you know it's all this stuff but just to have them die passively to me was so infuriating because like we've been leading up to this thing for so long and then it's just like i mean at least have like her dragon burn them or whatever it's mm-hmm. like at least have some kind of at least have know, someone action. directly murder them rather than exactly yeah yeah and I, I liked how they were holding each other it's like but just something eh, just didn't leave a good taste in my mouth mm-hmm. yeah i mean ugh, I, uh, yeah sorry <laughs> so once, once we get out of there uh where it starts getting a little little fuzzy for me again is what once we get danny and john which th- this scene was both beautiful and and awful at the same mm. time and th- this was like this was peak when this happened and we had one particular thing which we'll get to in a second i'm like what the fuck is going on <laughs> and i wonder are you gonna john, pontificate about the the morality of Iron Thrones, like oh, true god. Undead. Oh my god! That we'll was, get there. Uh, that we'll was a we'll lot. get there in a second. So then after that, uh, we obviously we, we get Danny and John's scene in the throne room, which looked great. I I, I wish I, I wish I I don't know if it was the acting or maybe just the whole overall vibe they were going for. Um, first off, when when they showed Jorgon covered in the snow, I thought that was great. Uh, yeah, I, I literally said wow out loud i was like this, this looks great this is also where 500 500 million dollars of the budget for the season one was just to have him shake off probably stuff. fuck you but it looked cool get out of here we need uh, yeah you just shake cool, off though. some snow um john uh john obviously sees that danny's too far gone and mm. he stabs her uh i thought that this was a super dull death scene for basically a lot of people's favorite character in the show uh it, i think undebatably the, the number one number two character for most people mm-hmm. uh i i it was i guess sure very realistic i've never stabbed somebody in the gut with a dagger before it's good good to know good good info <laughs> uh but she's just that's it she gets stabbed she doesn't say anything mm-hmm. she a little blood drips out of her mouth and that's it for her um and then after this fucking drogon <laughs> all, all of a sudden he he, he now understands he, he he like just got done running a thesis for <laughs> For the, for the modern the modern economy and how the Iron Throne is bad for business, mm-hmm. and instead of killing John, which there's no reason why he shouldn't have just burnt down John, like he he has no allegiance to John. He knows that yeah. he just killed his mom, and he just he he melts the Iron Throne. Mm-hmm. I literally said out loud. I I, I was w- watching it with my fiance. I go, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> <laughs> so was, just straight up. <laughs> I was like really confused by that too, but then I read a thing online that like and this is just someone's explanation this might not this yeah. might be how it is and this would actually be kind of dumb if it's how it was but the the that drogon like is a dumb almost like a dog and he <clears throat> thinks that the throne like killed, killed him the <laughs> it's like also a blade he's like wait blade blade bad and just like decides to like burn down the whole throne because he would like associate john with it that's like a really dumb theory and i hope that's not what they meant you know what i hope it is fuck it (laughs) 
if the double D's, so if they come out in this documentary that airs next weekend and they give that explanation, I I will I will demand their arrest. Like, I will demand that they be brought in in handcuffs. Uh, I mean, the, the fucking why, other one's oh just God. as bad, though. Yeah. It's like, it's oh, fucking... he understood so much that he destroyed the th- representation of absolute power because it corrupted his mother and led to her yeah. inevitable death. And he doesn't blame John, his, her murderer, for it. He blames yeah. the object that she desired most. I think you should just kill John. I mean, yeah, it made more sense maybe kill like John, the, and the also the Iron Throne gets burned down yeah. when he's killing John. Or, or yeah. and John's already been burned in the show, so I don't even think this would work. But or he, he burns John, and John like doesn't like die. Like, he's just like, oh, I'm a, I'm a right. target, and I'm immune to this fire now. I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's the only like, that explanation been... I can think of that why Drogon didn't kill him. It's because right. he like knows that he's Targaryen through some magic, you know. And then, like, where the fuck is he going with that body? Oh, I don't know. I like. I, I, I like. I, I want to picture. <laughs> I want to picture in like in like a, a, a spoof of this that there's just like there's some commoner who like just got out. He survived the, the town being burnt down, and like he's running away, and all of a sudden he sees the dragon coming at him, and the dragon just drops fucking Danny's body and kills the com- <laughs> only commoner left. I love so it, Danny yeah. really made sure she yeah. got everything. Right. Hey, that's as <laughs> as good as anything else in this season. <laughs> and also, like, why why was she so like unguarded? Was she was she just like so confident that she just killed all her enemies that she didn't really care yeah, that I mean, there was anyone around? Because she she actively knew that there was people within her 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 party that were conspiring to kill her mm-hmm. or conspiring against her. Like, I don't know why there was any Dothraki with them. And then after that, why wouldn't John just try to run out of there? Like, was he waiting for the Dothraki to come up? The only thing I can think is like. She put Drogon there to guard the door, but Drogon was like, oh, wait, no, this guy's cool. But I've, I've seen some stuff. He's close to my mom. Um, it's fine. Yeah. Well, the, the thing that I don't get is that John kills her, and then he can basically get away scot-free because she, yeah. her dead body's taken away by the dragon. There, Everyone's gone. Mm-hmm. And then I guess, I mean, he's John, so he has to like, admit <laughs> it. And he's like, well, guys, here's, here's what happened. Mm-hmm. I can just in. picture him going down to the street and being like, hey, like, I killed the queen. And then, like, they go out there, like, there's no queen here. And they're like, all right, John Grace. He's like, no, 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 I swear, I killed the queen. <laughs> and then, like, so it took him two weeks to convince yeah. them that when yeah. they finally put him in the slammer. And they're like, oh, you might have fucking killed the queen. <laughs> I, I, I agree. It's just, and a lot of the things that this show did so well in the first six seasons was that, like, everything that the characters did, it seemed super logical. Mm-hmm. Like, like, and or it seemed very human. Like, 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 when when Rob goes against uh, his promise to um, the phrase and marries mm. and marries his his, his wife, uh, yeah. and he and and the phrase end up killing him for it. Like mm. makes sense. Also makes sense that Rob is human and, and just did something fucking stupid, mm. and and that that got him killed. And this one, John, yeah, clearly could have just got away. And it was like somebody could be like, "Did you kill the queen?" He'd be like, "No, I, I didn't." Yeah. And they're like, "All right, we don't have proof." Like, where's the nearest? Oh, she I, she came down. Did she? Oh, man, must have just missed her. <laughs> Appar- apparently having your queen murdered for the mm-hmm. Dothraki and the Unsullied, who this this queen gave them everything, mm-hmm. for some reason, they're waiting for all the fucking Lords of Westeros to come down and, yeah. and, and help give this guy justice. He, he's he's yeah. waiting for the guy who killed the queen's brother and sisters to come down mm-hmm. to be like, hey, kill him or don't kill him. Yeah, Which, are yeah. the Dothraki honor-bound to John now? Like, that's, that's, a, that's a great fucking question, Brian, that I didn't even think about until now. Like, he fucking killed their call, Khaleesi, so yeah. if the blood... Ra- well, here's the, th- here's the problem, where Danny actually ingeniously gave herself an out. She, in the culture of the Dothraki, their blood riders are supposed to kill themselves if their call dies, and she named all the Dothraki her blood riders. So... Uh... So we, we, we did we did see a couple Dothraki at the yeah, end of the show. Yeah, the uh, conveniently like forgot about that. So uh, I'm not sure. Well, we're also not sure if there's fucking 10 of them or like yeah. 4,000 of them because there are as many as they need for a scene. Apparently, apparently a lot of them during the Battle of Winterfell were just hiding underground. The ones that we saw go out were just like half of them. Um, uh, is that what they said? 
Well, so they said they said in Winterfell that they only lost half their forces. So like yeah, in the episode sad, after yeah, the super sad Dothraki guy like they used, they were all like removing their thing and he removed half. Mm-hmm. I was like oh yeah, yeah only yeah. half died. And I even saw that and I was like fuck you like you <laughs> you all are dead like you're the one yeah, guy yeah. left. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. Like one or two. Like but... <laughs> I saw a funny like meme where someone was like doing patch notes for episode five and one of the things was like dothraki in the patch note was respawn all like yeah. <laughs> so ridiculous yeah. like one of the things is like bricks explode now like just yeah. ah, so much ridiculous so, stuff but so what you just said dylan actually connects to like one of the biggest things that occurred to me after the series ended and like you know over this last week that i've been thinking about where and this occurred to me in the first few seasons as well where the magic is always in the background, you know, you you don't really see too much magic in the first season or even in the first couple seasons until mm-hmm. you really you see like the dragon eggs hatch. Then it's like, oh, okay, this is like a dope fucking show because there's like a hint of that, or even like um, uh, Melisandre like being the old woman. Like you kind of like forget about it, but like it's a great end to like an episode. You know, there's like little things like that where like sprinkled here and there. It's it's it elevates the drama of it because there's a little bit of like unpredictability but this this last season and even the one before as well was like here's dragons they're gonna like battle zombies and all this shit and it's like then at that point you throw everything out the window and it just becomes this like pure fantasy show which it never was before and that's for me where like i really started to lose my like true interest where i was just like i'm just gonna go along for the ride whatever i don't really care too much anymore um was when yeah when they threw out all of the like realism out the window and they were just like now it's this fantasy show yeah for the thing that it was oh yeah the thing it was always built on was that it was a political drama that Mm. happened to be set in in a in a fictional world in in medieval times Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the 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 magic was always in the background, uh, pretty much till the dragons were hatched. And I think like the reason they gave too, and I think it, they said in the books too, when the dragons were born, mm, magic it, like, came back into the world, like, all yeah. the magic in the world. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I I totally agree with you. Where especially in the last two seasons, and like you knew it was coming in the last two seasons too. That you like you knew you eventually were gonna have to fight the White Walkers. But yeah, it really did turn into um, it was dragons versus the undead. And yeah. you clearly saw the humans had no chances against the dragons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, so I guess should we get to the uh, the scene in the pit afterwards? Oh, are they deciding uh, the fate of King's Landing? Or yeah. in the whole realm? So we get, a, we get the dragon pit. Tyrion's for some reason still alive. Uh, yes. He's brought out. I thought he was being brought out to be executed. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, I learned that it was like I think that it was like a month later. Okay, good. It's good um, to know because it was very unclear. Well, what the logically, fuck was if you travel by by horse, it takes you a month from Winterfell mm-hmm. uh, to get to King's Landing. I don't know if they they forgot that. Uh, it was well, like three it, months. Pretty the sure thing that like they the three months. The thing that really confused me was um, winter's supposed to last fucking years. And it's just starting at the end of the last episode, and when they come out, it's like spring. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, "How long was this?" A lot of people made it logical by that they were saying that the, the Night King brought winter, but like I don't think that that's how it works. That's like, not, I, no, I think no, no, winter, no. I think winter's a natural phenomenon that like it comes <laughs> and it's there for like a few <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And it's like all even before the show started. Yeah. It's why the Starks' words are "Winter's coming." You know, it's not about the White King. It's just, you know, to be prepared for winter. And that's what, in the whole books, that's what it's all about. It's gotten progressively colder and, like, bleaker. And by the end of the last book, winter is finally, like, reached King's Landing. So, I don't I don't know what's happening with that. I guess they just forgot about winter. Like right, that meme right. of, it's like, well, they actually forgot about that. So we get to the dragon pit. We have Sansa, Arya, Bran, Yara, Jon Royce, Sweet Robin, uh, Sam, who uh, is now the lord of, uh, of, of, I forget his his hometown. Um, Horn, Horn, and we have. Um, uh, I'll look it up. 
I think Horn Hill for it. I think Horn Hill for it. Um, and then we have uh, we have Ed Tully who like sure I haven't seen this dude in two seasons. Last time I saw him, <laughs> he, was, he was a prisoner for for Wall the Frey, but great. Um, so they get a talk in. Uh, they th- for some reason Grey Worm's like, all right, wh- like what do you guys want to do? And they're like, like well, they're like, well, aren't, why haven't you executed John yet? Or where's John? Mm-hmm. They say, well, we we're waiting for him to be executed and tried for justice. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, well, well like, how haven't you done that yet? And he says. Well, we don't have a king, and at this point, I'm like, "What the fuck are you talking about, Grey Worm?" Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like the Unsullied and Dothraki have been waiting all this time to kill John, who was the, it, and like they had no problem killing Lannisters right on site, mm-hmm. uh, per- performing genocide, no issues there. But that was a direct Worm. order. They don't have their very direct structured uh, army. You know, they need apparently, a general. Apparently, if they don't have a king. You know they don't know what to do. Mm. So he's like, he's like, yeah, we need a king. And they're like, all right, well, we need to choose a king. And he's like, sure, let's choose a king. <laughs> and then so, so Tyrion gives his whole speech, obviously, uh, mm. and they somehow. Uh, well, I, th- I I actually thought the Ed- Edmure. Yeah, we got one right. last shot at Edmure. I I did laugh at that. <laughs> I did think that that was funny. What did says is they like, Uncle, please sit down. Yeah, it was a big like, dude, you're not gonna make things. Come on. <laughs> Um, oh man! And then obviously, they they land on Bran, which are, and then and then after some pitching, uh, and then after Arya goes, well, his dick doesn't work. He oh, can't that him. was so. Or was it Sansa or Arya? Whoever said it, yeah. uncalled. I, I that totally, I totally missed that part. I gotta rewatch that scene. It's like Bran can't have children. It's like yo. Yeah, <laughs> Like he can't be king, he can't father children. Darren's like, maybe that's exactly what we need. It's not a, uh, not not a family to run this run yeah. Westworld anymore. And and he's like, he pitches it to Bran, and he's like, will you accept this? And Bran's like, what do you think I came all this way for? And at this point, uh, alarms going off in my head. I'm like, Bran's the fucking bad guy of this. Yeah, story. exactly. Yeah. Bran's the bad guy. It's so ridiculous. Bran has been so useless this whole fucking season. We yeah. don't know what he did to battle one fell, and all of a sudden we found out that he, the plan all along. Was for himself to become king, and now he knows that the whole. Uh, and it makes so much sense. The reason he was pushing Sam this whole time to tell John was so it would corrupt Danny and she would burn down the whole fucking city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's like you know that seems like a plot point that you know you have like two or three more episodes with. Yeah. And there's like there's a lot of things you could actually do if you made like another season or so, and that would be like a big, you know, plot point. I think. Uh, you could continue a lot of these character stories and make it still interesting, but anyway, go, yeah, go, go on, go on. But that's like, so th- then they th- somehow, poor Jon Snow, who he he found out that he was the heir to the Iron Throne. <laughs> Tyrion con- basically convinced him to kill Danny. Mm-hmm. Not only was he killing Danny, he was killing a, a tyrant who, a would-be tyrant who performed genocide, mm-hmm. killed just killed thousands of women and children innocent women and children mm-hmm. so he, he kills her and then all of a sudden Tyrion, who is now fucking hand of the king somehow who's which is fine with gray worm yeah uh they, they convince gray worm a foreigner who helped commit said genocide uh, that you know you're right you know john deserves he, he deserves justice so we're gonna send him up north uh mm-hmm. about his days he can't have a family again he can't have father children again mm-hmm. And and somehow that leads fucking Grey Worm to be like, all right, good job. Sounds uh, the, good. His, I'm two, good. His, his two sisters and his brother. You determine that. Yeah. Uh, I I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, this so these final twenty minutes was this is what had me. I'm like, fuck this. Like this is this is this is the this is the this, this is the worst case scenario I I imagined. Yeah. Well, I think the worst part of it was uh, when everyone's going like I. Yes, fine, Brand's the king. And mm-hmm. Sansa's like, ooh, I just don't know if the North will follow Stark, you know? Like, exactly. It's like, what? What? Which, like, first ugh. of all, he's like, he's actually the fucking, I know he doesn't want to be. Yeah, the like Lord of Winterfell. For, you know, sexist reasons. Mm-hmm. But, like, in reality, yeah, it's actually, that's his fucking right anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, ooh, yeah. Sorry, brother. Yeah. At that point, the Iron Islands, who have tried to see, see against the crown several different times, part just part like, of sure. their deal to join with Danny is that they will be an independent kingdom. Mm-hmm. Not like, now. Not now. We don't, we don't. The writers either forgot about it or don't have time to go over it. 
So uh, uh, Yara's just like, yep, sure, Brand Stark, great, mm-hmm. you crippled guy. You know, we have we have problems following dudes without without dicks. Yeah. But a crippled who we don't know, sure, you're our king now, great. Yeah. yeah. Super. And it's, um, it's sort of like, you know, oh, every all of these wars end now that, like, somehow Bran is king, but that doesn't seem realistic to me at all. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I think it's summed up great where the actor said when he was reading the script that he thought they were pranking him. Yeah. Like, a big script. Yeah. He's like, oh, they obviously just gave all of us a script where our character ends up being in charge. Right. And then, yeah. nope. Nope, that's, the, that's the really how it went down. And they were all just like, hey, John's used to having a shitty life. I don't see why that has to stop. Uh, the, guy, the guy who <laughs> arguably has the most tragic life out of everyone mm-hmm. here. Uh, let's just send him back up north again because, like, who cares? I, I'm king now. Uh, you're a queen. Uh, Arya's going to go fucking west to Westeros, mm-hmm. which like, if Bran could just warg into a crow and go see what's over there, but he's not going to do yeah. that right now anyway. Um, and then I love, their, I love their talk on the dock with John. And there he's and yeah, John's the Lord talking. Of the Rings moment. <laughs> And Bran goes, oh, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And, like, I think they were trying to make this seem like it was a feel-good moment, but, like, alarms went off in my head again. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean John was right where he was supposed to be? <laughs> John was supposed to be Bran is the fucking, like, fucking, like, enemy of the, so, like, the villain of the fucking series. I am so bored that now that I think that, I th- I think that, like, George R. R. Martin's going to end it where, like, Bran was the was the bad guy this whole time. Mm-hmm. Three-Eyed Raven was the bad guy this whole time. And I think the writers are just like, nope, it's a happy story. But, like, yeah. Br- you could make a strong argument. Bran is the is the villain of this entire story. Mm-hmm. The three eyed yeah, Raven, yeah. him and the old guy before are the are the bad guys of this entire story. Yeah. Oh my God! And so the Targaryen Targaryens are wiped out now. If John's not going to have a family, they're dead. Because apparently, also whoever Vis- uh, Varys was sending all the crows to mm-hmm. didn't get the message. No, I guess not. That was a dead yeah, like, end too, right? He took three hours to write those those, those messages. <laughs> he was actually just working on that one scroll, and then he had to burn it, and that was it. He like kept spelling stuff wrong. So it's been a while yeah. since I've spelled Targaryen. Is ah oh, God, I don't know where the Y is. <laughs> and uh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Honestly, I think that's one of the biggest things they butchered in this final season, and even just in the show. It has been like for a few seasons, I think is is Bran, and. Just even every time they'd cut to him, it was just so fucking like laughable, and you know, just him just like sitting there, and it's like, okay, how the fuck did you appear there again? It's like, it's like a like a horror trope, or it's like a parody, and it was like so ridiculous. But even beyond that, it was like, I don't know. Once once he went past like a certain age, I just like, I don't know. I didn't I didn't like his character anymore. Or I guess it was when he became the Raven, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yep, and well, he's the king. So he's the goddamn king. <laughs> Pretty much setting everything off. We got that, the the, the Seinfeld esque um, meaning of the uh, the 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 High Council. I think is what they're called, mm. uh, where we see that the Braun, small council. Some, yeah, small council. Thank you. Is okay. for some reason the the there. Lord of Coin. Yeah, Braun, <sighs> yeah. who no had to, who had no point to this season. Um, who listen, Dylan? It's not what you know; it's who you know in King's Landing. Apparently, apparently, Bronn's whole point was they gave him that crossbow for no fucking reason to mm-hmm. get out of King's Landing. So he, for some reason, they didn't have to go back and say, "Oh yeah, no, he wasn't killed during all this." Mm-hmm. And basically, so he, they, so him and Lena Headey, like the actor and Lena Lena Headey, didn't have to be together because they broke up like twenty years ago, mm-hmm. and like it's in their contract oh, really? they can't, they can't be on screen together, yeah. which is why Wait, they they're serious. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it's in their contract. <laughs> they're in such a serious relationship that ended so badly that that's the reason why they're never in the same scene together. That's um, insane. That's why fucking Kyber like when Kyber goes down yeah. to brothels, it like like it would have made more sense for it to be Cersei, but it was Kyber because of all mm-hmm. that. Um. So Bronn had no point, but now he's sub- even after he threatened to kill Tyrion, which Tyr- you figured Tyrion would be like, "Fuck this dude!" Like he's. Really not my friend. He's not loyal to me. Yeah. Oh, why would I make him the master of coin? <laughs> and he, not only that, he got, yeah. he got fucking high guard. 
which is like the, one of the most valuable keeps in the entire in the entire mm-hmm. yeah. uh, Broncos. The Lord to of me, the Reach, like it's, oh, it's yeah. ridiculous. To me, he shouldn't have been at the table, and then as well as uh, I keep forgetting his goddamn name, the old man who yeah. I love, Davos. He's, he's just the Lord of Boat, Shouldn't be boats. Shouldn't at the fucking though. table either. I don't know. Yeah. The Lord of Ships, whatever it's called. Yeah. He knows a lot about ships. He he's that sounds, smuggler. That sounds made up. I don't think there was a master of ships before this. <laughs> yeah, before there wasn't. It was like No, no, there's there's always been, there's always been a master of ships. I'm super sad that there was no like like head chef and it was like hot pot. Like, uh, yeah, like, that was a huge here, missed uh, opportunity. Or maybe he's on the boat with Arya though, her personal chef. A ba- bacon, those those star cupcakes or whatever he's mm. making. Oh, pot pie. Yeah. Pot pie. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Oh, what happened to Gendry that, in the end? What was the thing with him? So he's uh, he's now the lord of uh, of. Um, oh, so Gendry, yeah. Lord of lord of... Yeah. Um, so yeah, other than that, we we had we had uh, that's pretty much the other major thing. We we had Brienne filling in the. the the Knight's book with Jamie, mm-hmm. which is great, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, Jamie really fucked you over in his character arc. Mm-hmm. Really, that was super. Um, and then in the very end, we, we, we get Sansa being crowned. We get, uh, which tomorrow I think you said was great, which, yeah, it was great. Yeah. I mean, Sansa's been yeah. through the worst of it more than anybody else in this show. So to see her succeed was awesome. Um, we have Arya on a ship uh, to, to potentially just go off the end of the world or go to Essos. <laughs> in the east of Essos, yeah. which was west of Westeros, cool. the Essos. What are you talking uh, about? <laughs> all, the, all, the, knows. Yeah. all those flat earthers are going to be real shocked. <laughs> um, and then we get John at the very end, get, arriving at Castle Black. And I think that there's like there's some debate about this. Mm. I interpreted him leaving with the with the wildlings as him like he's abandoning the Night's Watch to go up north. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I really think, wish they would have told us what the fuck was happening in that scene. I think they just wanted to end it where they started it, which mm. was basically in the, yeah, in that, the like, gate opening. Part of the forest. Yeah, because yeah. I, I took it as, and this is another thing that it, I, I think it kind of screwed the character a little bit. I took it as him abandoning his post. Mm. To, 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 to he's now like he's the new Mance Raider. Like he's now king north of the wall. I mean, there's no point for the Night's Watch um, now. Because yeah, totally. it, it was like initially to keep the others out, and then it became keeping the wildlings out. And now the wildlings are out 100%, like cool with the rest of Westeros, mm-hmm. and the others are presumably all dead. So there's no point. That's that's how that's how our series ends. Mm-hmm. <sighs> um, with, uh, but the which, what? Yeah. But the wolf went north, so John has to. Mm. He did get, get a pet, which, like, my theory is that they, they very... They just filmed came. that? Yeah. They, my just <laughs> they demanded Kit Harrington come somewhere to film a scene and CGI'd mm. it in. Yep. <laughs> After um, the backlash from the episode four. <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, to kind of wrap it up, I guess let's, let's give our... Let's give our... I'm going to say let's give our series favorite moment Mm-hmm. Our season finale score, and then our series overall score. Mm-hmm. Or I'm gonna put you on the spot first, since you're, you're our guest. Yes. Okay. Uh, favorite moment favorite, first. Favorite moment. This is just sticking out to me, and I don't even know if it's necessarily favorite, but this was like the most like emotionally affecting and damaging was when the mount uh, the mountain versus viper oh uh, yeah uh, yeah i was gonna say that, that too like, that yep. haunted me. um and it was just so good but it was like also like no <laughs> mm. um to get my scores now too yeah well, what's your what's your overall score and then your season score out of 10 yeah well i should do season first and then overall all right season out of 10 um yeah. like three oh. out of ten <laughs> well okay i had some good moments mm. but like it brought the series down so much like that's the whole thing it's like yeah. i probably would have given the series like a fucking 10 mm. if these this season and even like the one before it like didn't happen 
Mm. So like the overall series gets like an eight because I, I I still love it, but mm. like this season brought it down <laughs> like two full full points. Right. Yeah. Um. All right. So I'll go next. I think for the best moment, I was gonna say the mountain, the viper, uh, but because I. I did think when the Viper fucking got his head exploded, I was like, fuck, the show does not take any prisoners. Like, the show will do whatever it wants. Like, unbelievable. Um, my favorite mm-hmm. moment other than that was when, well, I guess the Red Wedding. Um, mm-hmm. That moment where Catelyn lifts up uh, Roose Bolton's sleeve and you see that he's in full armor under his clothes and you're just like oh shit and then it's just like a slow motion you know car crash all around where you're like oh my god they just massacred like two of the main characters and like ended a big part of the storyline that's happening right right now yeah and then so for the season i will give it a five because it's still like one of the most incredible like scores cinematography acting but the writing just takes away from it so much. Um, if I was like rating it just for like seasons three and four, I would say that this is like the greatest show of all time. Mm-hmm. But you gotta look at the whole package. So I think an eight is a fair assessment for that. Yeah, yeah, I agree about the greatest show of all time thing. It's like sans these last two seasons. Mm. show of all time i've seen it like twice through i'll probably rewatch it again mm. <laughs> i think it would be hard right now i like do i want to watch it again <laughs> when i when i know yeah. how it ends like do i want to go on that journey again do you think there's any chance for you that it's like can get better on a rewatch i i do think the the season um six got better when mm. we watched it um maybe it was also just because my expectations were much lower all right Dylan, well, how about you what's your favorite part well brian first off i'm gonna say rip to all the edits you have to do tonight oh yeah because yeah. the, the all our all, all the listeners aren't gonna have any idea how many times this this recording has cut out <laughs> thanks thanks to whatever's going on in my house right now so um it's all I, good. I, don't I, worry I look forward to hearing your guys' scores and favorite <laughs> scenes when I re-listen to the podcast because I was not here for that. Um, so my favorite scene, I actually have a tie. Uh, first is the reveal the the reveal that Jon Snow is uh, is Lyanna Stark's child mm-hmm. uh, in the Tower of Joy just because uh, after after the first two seasons, I, I decided to read the books and I got caught up and that was really something that uh, I can't even imagine as a book reader how long people were waiting for. I can't, um, yeah, but, I can't imagine either. But even, like, in the show, it was just so well done. And then with, like, the score in the background, shout out to R- Ramin Djawadi. I'm, I'm fucking that name up. I'm sorry. Um, it was just, it, it, like, the cut from Baby John to Old John, like, to, so, like, for the dumb people to reveal that that's who it is. It was just, it worked so well. And it was, like, one of the, one of the few times I, I teared up during the show. Um, but that's also tied with Jon Snow during the Battle of the Bastards when he his horse gets shot down with arrows when he's charging at ramsey and they're all charging at him and he takes his belt off kind of like this is it this is how i'm gonna die and and like the the same thing the score the music the the sound it was all great and then it just cut in with um with the horses meeting right before they get to john yeah that was was just so so fucking good i definitely Um, think that's gonna be a scene that stands like the test of time when people think or like show montages of like game of thrones that, for sure that would be one yep. of the big ones for sure um my, my overall season score is a is, is a 50 out of 100 uh i'm also kind of giving it like a, a, an incomplete uh <laughs> really more than anything um my, my, Please my, revise. Finale, my finale score i'm giving a uh, 20 out of 100 Oof. and the 20 is only for the technical aspects because i just hate every every single thing that happened pretty mm-hmm. much um my overall it's still my all-time favorite series um it's the, the, luckily they didn't manage to take that away from me because i've even started to rewatch the first couple seasons again mm-hmm. and it's just like it, I, it i'm glad i did that because it, it 
leaves a little better taste in my mouth now because I'm like, this show when it was at its peak was was just unbelievable. Like mm-hmm. there was nothing like it on TV. I don't think there ever will be anything like it on TV when it was at its peak. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm giving the overall show a, a, a 90 out of 100. I feel that. I, yeah, I said, I don't know if you heard it, if you had cut out, but when Tamora and I were talking, I gave seasons three and four as like the best like seasons of television of all time. Uh, for me, uh, the, the ending of the the second half of two, mm-hmm. all the way, um, all, all the way through four, I, I think it was in its prime. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really came back during season six though, with um, like the light of the seven when she blew up the sept. Ooh, yeah. Um, uh, the battle of the bastards. Um, there's a few like I think five is probably its most up in the air season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hard home really changed it around for me because I thought season five was so so up until that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but four, four is probably my favorite season because four, you had the mountain versus the viper. You had the battle at Castle Black. You had Joffrey dying. Mm. Um, you you had Tyrion's trial. Uh, season four to me was was the best season. For yeah. me, it's number one. I got to give it to number to season one. Yeah. The, the more the more I watch one, the more I appreciate just how like it was low budget for for a show this size, yeah. and like the writing was was at at its best. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you read the book still in. We could have had some dope battles if they had the budget from that first book. I think I can't even I can't even imagine the battle of uh, of the Blackwater with like the budget they have now. Mm-hmm. It would yeah. it would have been incredible because there was just, just so much that was left out. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, there's even like wise. ships crashing into each other, making bridges that people yeah. are fighting on. Like <laughs> it's so insane in the book. Yeah, like he's the definition when George R. R. Martin's like, I wanted to write something that could never be filmed. It's like, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, the Battle of the Blackwater probably could never be filmed. Unless you want to put $100 million into one, like, episode of television. Right. All right, so we should probably wrap it up before we have more technical difficulties. Yeah, is there um, any show that anyone's looking forward to? Just, like, what? Are you, what's next? Uh, I, I am, I don't know. I'm looking forward <laughs> to Stranger Things Season 3. Ooh, it's really the only choice. show I, I continuously watch right now that's really coming out soon. So, mm-hmm. other than that, I, I um, I'll, I'm gonna give Watchmen a try. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm not all in, but I'm, 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 I'm gonna watch. I guess I'm you'll watch the Watchmen. Yes. Yeah. I, I'll also say yeah. I'm probably like, I'm gonna definitely tune in for the next Game of Thrones show without a doubt. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Same. Same. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's it's Westworld. That's like the one that I'm like, all right, this is gonna bring me back to like, I don't know, <laughs> liking something and watching things. Because like I, I don't want to make me happy TV again. Too. Like, but like my favorite shows typically are, you know, I love Silicon Valley. I can't wait for that mm-hmm. to come back. I love like shorter comedy shows. Mm-hmm. Not like, like I don't know, Walking Dead. Like even was one that I was like, I just don't like these hour long like mm-hmm. things. But Westworld. Can't wait. Yeah. I will say session is really good. I will say uh season two of Barry is one of my all time favorite seasons of Yeah, I gotta, I gotta check you guys that don't out. watch Barry. Barry is very, very good. For me, um yeah, Westworld is my favorite show on T V right now. I'm obsessed with Westworld. I think it's just amazing. The yeah. writing on that's phenomenal. The, again, the acting. It's it does feel like the successor to Game of Thrones in a lot of ways. And the trailer for the new season was pretty amazing. Pretty good. It's pretty good. You got Jesse Pinkman in it. You can. Yeah. I'm not a huge Westworld guy. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, but Jesse Pinkman, you can count me in. I'm I'm, I'm definitely tuning in for season three. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, uh, there's still a lot of good television out there. Obviously, this isn't the end of premiere TV. I know some people had like articles like, "Is this the end of the water cooler show?" I don't think so. There's going to be another yeah. show that comes up that yeah. everyone's going to watch and talk about. Oh, I forgot. I was going to, sorry. I was no. going to say The Witcher with uh, Henry Cavill. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Very much looking For forward sure. to that, too. That could literally be the successor to Game of Thrones. Like, that's it, what they want it to be, anyways. If they do it right, it really could. Mm. And then uh, we have the Lord of the Rings television show being developed at Amazon. Look at you, oh, yeah. just throwing out the bangers. Yeah, yeah I can't so. work without either. So there's a lot of good stuff coming on the horizon, and there's a lot of good stuff coming on the channels, right? Tomorrow we're going to be filming an Itch.io show yep. this weekend, this, hopefully this a weekend. few of them. 
Yeah, yeah. And we are going to continue to, or I think we're going to ramp up pumping out these podcasts, if I had to guess. I don't want to make any promises because I don't want people to be like, hey, you said we were going to have like five more episodes in like a short amount of time and it didn't happen because life gets in the way. We're busy people, but I think we're going to have some more. And yeah, just make sure you keep watching stuff on the channel. It's, make sure you're subscribed on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter. Instagram, Twitch, anything else you guys want to promote? Uh, follow me on MySpace. Uh, yep, just uh, add him to your to the top six. Make sure he's above Tom. Could you put anyone above Tom? I don't remember. I don't care to find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thank you guys so much for listening. and Have a great day, night, whenever you're listening. There's no time shut, for this. Shut up. Shut up, Ryan Wong. I know you're still listening. Shut up, Ryan. Ryan, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Brian Wong. <laughs> we, uh, bless you. Yeah, bless Brian Wong. <laughs> the end of every episode, we're just going to be bless Brian Wong. <laughs> oh, man. Bye, guys.